Expect the Unexpected Wrestling Fans. I am longtime independent wrestling fan Robert. Era of the Unexpected was a good return show. First effort of ETU Wrestling in 2022. Uh, they, we start out with a singles match as we see Tony Deppen take on the notorious 187 Homicide who carried the NWA World Junior Heavyweight Championship with him, belt with him, and Homicide announced, I'll put this on the line, and Larry announced it to the crowd that it was now for the NWA World Junior Heavyweight Championship. Unless I'm mistaken, Homicide was supposed to be on the first ETU show back in December, but was unable to do it. So, this was quite a nice surprise, since Homicide wasn't even announced for this show. Um, they eventually went out on the floor, and they were throwing each other to the guardrails. At one point, Homicide was thrown to the rail, and looked like the, the rails were falling out of place, and those special lights set up in the corner almost were almost knocked down. <laughs> Eventually, uh, Homicide got the win, defeating Tony Deppin to retain the NWA World Junior Heavyweight Championship. And he said, took the microphone, told Deppin he's the most underrated rated wrestler in pro wrestling. Up next, we had tag team action as we saw MSP. I apologize for not getting their individual names. As they did battle with Kevin Koo and... The bone collector, Dom Gorini, Violence is Forever, who came out to the Cranberry song, Zombie. Hmm. I don't think, unless I'm mistaken, it's the first time I've ever seen somebody come out to that song. A very good tag team match, which saw Violence is Forever defeat MSP. And then it was time for the Open Weight 8 Gauntlet match, where the winner would receive a future title shot. The uh, Open 8 Weight... Open weight eight gauntlet. We started out with Azriel versus uh, Platinum Max Caster, and um, Max Caster was victorious over Azriel. But then the ne out came the next entrant, the Dominican Destroyer Vargas, who uh, Platinum Max Caster managed to defeat uh, Vargas. And then out comes uh, Ace Romero, and I guess we had. Expect the unexpected karaoke as everybody was singing the outfields, your love, which is what Romero comes in the ring to. Um, and pff, Caster deliberately got counted out, and Romero advanced in the gauntlet match. Then out came Yoya. I don't know what his entrance theme was. Uh, Ace Romero ended up defeating Yoya. Then came the prize, Alec Price. He uh, wound up defeating Ace Romero, and then out came the Grim Reefer, who was smoking one up. <laughs> Ugh. No, I can't still smell it. And he smoked it throughout the match, and I think even Alec Price tried to smoke it at one point. But the Grim Reefer defeated... Uh... Wait a minute, did he? Damn it, I can't remember now. Fuck. I don't know if Reefer defeated... Did Reefer beat Alex, Alec Price or Alec Price beat the Grim Reefer? But I know that then came the final uh, participant of the... of the open weight, weight gauntlet match, and that was uh, the young prodigy, Marcus Mathers. And I can't remember if it was Alec Price or the Grim Reefer he beat at the end of... Uh, to win the gauntlet match and to earn a future title shot. All apologies, folks, because unfortunately, I was so tired when I got home, I went right to sleep right away, and that's why I'm having trouble remembering some things. Next up, out came Shaza McKenzie as she did battle with the cold hearted player, Danny DeMonto. And DeMonto says, you know. I'm in my wrestling gear, and Shaza takes the microphone. She says, I know what to expect from you. Bring out the damn weapons. And out came doors and stuff with things attached to them. At one point, right near me, Domato powerbombed Mackenzie onto a, 
onto a door with mouse traps on it. Looked like one of them got caught on her after she got up. Then right, right in front of me, Damato bridged, used the door to bridge the t bridge, uh, the ring. To bridge the uh, ring to the apron. No, I'm sorry, the apron to the guardrail. And it had two chairs underneath it. And I think Mackenzie Death Valley Driver used a Death Valley Driver on Demonto through that board. I thought it, I thought the board survived at first, but it, but it broke. <laughs> uh, back in the ring. Wow. Mackenzie gave another Death Valley Driver onto, look like cans that were glued onto a door. Uh, the end came when uh, Demonto used that, I don't know what he calls that move. He did it off like the second or top rope, putting her through a, a door set up on two chairs and pinned her to win the match. He then gets a microphone and he, oh, and he says to her, you know, you've been, I forgot, again, I can't remember everything. <sighs> The, um, but he did, what I do know is he did invite her into the chains, meaning to compete at ICW No Holds Barred, which will be in Australia later this year. I think he said October. And look at me like Shaza was brought to tears with, with what Danny said afterwards. Then they went to intermission at that point. And we were, the show resumed, we were scheduled to see Masha Slavich and Akira to battle with the Kirks, Brandy and Casey. But they come out and Casey Kirk says, you can see I'm not dressed to wrestle. I don't know if she was injured or not. So Brandon wanted to fight Masha and Akira by by himself. And uh by himself, but then Marcus Mathers, who won the open open weight eight gauntlet match earlier in the show, he comes out and he's in the match. Eventually Masha Savage and Akira defeat Brandon Kirk and Marcus Mathers. Now, one, I got one thing as I tell you this. After Danny mentioned about Shaza, he said that he's got like, he says before he plans on hanging it up for good, he says he's got a, a short list of wrestlers he wants to face, and he said he wants to face the notorious 187 homicide at the next ETU event. I'm not sure when that'll be, obviously, yet. All right, next up, out comes AC Mack, the independent wrestling champion. And then out comes a blast from the past, the Black Nature Boy, Scoot Andrews, who was a, a top independent star in the late 90s and early 2000s. And I got to say, Andrews still looks to be in good shape. Don't know if he's back on a regular basis or not. And AC Mack said he, he'll put the independent world wrestling championship on the line in their match. The match was on. Uh, um, Andrews eventually hit that pump handle pile driver, which he called the force of nature. And Mac eventually got his shoulder up from that one. I forget how the match ended, but AC Mac was victorious over the Black Nature Boy, Scoot Andrews, to retain the... Independent Wrestling Championship. Next up was a women's match which saw the Kick Demon, Janai Kai, do battle with uh, Mia Yim. Very good match that these ladies put on, and um, Mia Yim eventually put Janai Kai down for a three count after I forgot what that move's called. Mia Yim was victorious over the Kick Demon, Janai Kai. And it came to our main event as we saw the Rockwell Express. Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson and Ricky's son, Kerry Morton, do battle with all three members of the SAT, Jose, Will, and Joel Maximo. Uh, I know at one point, I think it was a, a double or triple suplex in the ring that the Rock and Roll Express performed, and I think something went, something went wrong there. Um... Eventually, the end came when, uh, well, no, Ricky Morton hit one of the Maximals with a destroyer. Uh, I 
the end came when um, the Spanish fly was given to Kerry Morton and they got the three count and the SAT thanked the Rock and Roll Express. Now, the SAT were accompanied by the Spot Monkeys and I think one of them, I guess, got out of line and there was a door set up on the... Uh, set up... There was a door placed between the ring and the guardrail and... They were going to put, the SAT were going to put one of those spot monkeys through it. Joel Maximo, actually all three of them were, Joel, Will, and Jose are looking towards the, the camera. And Joel says, you know, we've been calling out the Briscoes. In the meantime, two spot monkeys grabbed one spot monkey, threw him over the top rope, threw, crashed it through that door that was set up between the ring and the, and the uh, guardrail. And then those two... Spot monkeys attacked the other two spot monkeys that were in the ring, and then they attacked the SAT. They take their masks off. It's none other than Violence is Forever, Kevin Koo and Dom Garini, who wrestled earlier in the show, and they pretty much put out a child wanting to face the SAT. <sighs> wow. All right. Well, personal notes time. It's good seeing Jack Sabbath, Larry Legend, Brad, Carl Roberts. Who else did I see there? Elliot. Hmm. Huh. All right, well, um, well, we do have a memorable quote. For you, Rob! For you, Rob! Danny D'Amato, when he put a door set up between the ring apron and the guardrail right by me. Uh... Well, no return date was announced for the next show. Hopefully, it'll be in the summer, since uh, this was the not only the first ETU show of this year, but first ETO show, ETTO, ETU show since December. Of course, it debuted December of 2021, so hopefully, there'll be a show this summer that ETU has. Uh, before the show, they were playing some entrance music of. ECW wrestlers. They played Man in the Box. They played Walk. They played Simon Says, which was Simon Diamond's entrance theme. I uh, forgot what else was there. Uh... Oh, it's great to see Pete, Pete Rosado. Uh... Uh, Ryan Peterson, who, who eventually showed up. Well, again, no return date was announced, but I would like to see at the next ETU show, Day Debato, one-on-one -on -one with the Notorious 187 Homicide, the SAT against Violence is Forever, or maybe a six-man tag. I have all three SAT bears against Violence is Forever and a partner. Um, hopefully someday, since it didn't happen... See Masha Slanovich and Akira against both Kirks, since Casey Kirk was unable to compete. I uh, sure hope you bring back... Uh, who would I like you to bring back? Oh, well, oh definitely bring back the Dominican Destroyer Vargas. That guy's going to be something. Uh, you know, as the night was going on, I just wasn't, I don't know what got into me, but I just wasn't feeling, you know, high and mighty about being there. Uh, on the way out the door, a guy who said he watches my videos, he asked me to, like, sign something for him, and I said, no, thank you. 
But when I went out the door, there were so many people smoking. I don't know, they were just smoking weed or something else. But, you know, because while I was waiting for my lift ride to, to bring me home, it stunk so bad. Uh, ugh. No, I can't still smell it now, but my goodness. Ugh. Mm. Well, let's see. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I think, um, I sure hope, uh, like I said, I mean, I mean, originally this show was originally going to be held somewhere in Long Island, but then they had to do it in Ridgefield Park, New Jersey. So hopefully, eventually, ETU can have a show in the New York area. That'd be great. Or in Long Island. Uh, mm. But I'm trying to think what else. If there's anybody else I could think of they might have for the next show or... Uh -uh. Well, actually, no. There's some. Since we had an open weight eight gauntlet match, why not a tag team gauntlet match? Jack Sabbath, I know you're big on tag team wrestling. You know that that'd be that'd be great. Even though there's no championships right now in in ETU, but you know I know Jack's high is very big on tag team wrestling, and there's quite a number of tag teams I can think of that would probably be be great for the product. So, uh, hopefully everybody enjoyed this review, this video, hopefully you enjoyed this show, and, uh, expect the unexpected lives up to the name.